enable a, a process that allows for the Minister of Commerce in, in the instance where the applicant applies there, uh, who can issue that license and uh, maybe communicate to the other um, areas, the other ministries, you know, following that submission with, with, the, with the proviso that it can be revoked if, if, if there's something untoward that um, the due diligence suggests. And, and, and Chair, it's only because, or, or if there can be other, another simpler way, because I'm conscious, sir, that we're talking about, you know, persons who want to maximize on whatever opportunity it is. We all know in business, time is money. And, and so, you know, we want to avoid in this modern time these um, long and unnecessary bureaucratic processes. Senator Holder, this, this matter, I would have to say to you, was perhaps the most challenging of the, the areas that we confronted in the process of bringing this legislation. Um, there is a separate regime, completely separate standing on its own, um, which the Ministry of the Environment had for dealing with the beaches. Um, equally, the fish markets are governed by their own regime. And, and, and everything else in Barbados is considered a market to be governed by the markets and slaughterhouse at, under the Ministry of Agriculture. So it really became a challenge to try to bring these three together into one, um, one unit. I understand what you're saying. Um, it is perhaps the best that we can make of the circumstances to have it done in the way that we are doing it because effectively what we want to do is to have one piece of legislation which ensures equality of treatment across multiple um, theaters of commercial activity. And each of those theaters of commercial activity had previously been governed by its own rules and regulations. So we're trying to bring them together in one. I, I understand clearly the challenge you have because it is a matter that I had, had, had turned over in my mind as well. I believe that when we speak about consultation, it should be understood that it is not just about minister to minister consulting, but rather the principal, I can't remember, was it, was it Wins, was it? The Carl Toner principle. Carl Toner principle um, that ensures that it is really the, the staff of the ministry who do this interfacing. And effectively what would be happening is that the ministry responsible for fisheries and the ministry responsible for fisheries alone will be in a position to say there are four available stalls at Oysters Fish Market and one at Payne's Bay. Nobody else can determine that. And therefore it is for the Ministry of Commerce to reach out to say we have applications. Can you fill the, 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 the space? Uh, or can the space, is there space for the applicants to, to, to be um, satisfied? And it is only then when once that consultation is done that you know what exists within the Ministry of Fisheries. Um, it is not an automatic thing, therefore, that if all of the fish market stalls and so on are, are taken up at present, and you have five applicants to have a, a, a fish market stall, that you could automatically get it. That is the reality. And the only way that that could be governed really is by the Ministry responsible for fisheries making that determination. So too it is with the um, National Conservation Commission. Because they must maintain the beaches in a certain way and because they have a certain responsibility for the environment and all the other things related to the management of the beaches, flora and fauna, they must be in a position to say this is the amount of space we're allocating on any beach for vending. And the only way that we can know that from commerce is by interfacing with them at the staff level. So I understand the challenge, but really it is really the only, up to this point, the only feasible way of operationalizing this that we've been able to come up with. So Chair follow-up, is it a case where the applicant then applies to the ministry, for example, in this case of, of, of the environment and or markets and so on, and those ministries issue the license, and those ministries then in turn notifies 
the Ministry of Commerce. Is that is that the process? Yeah. Chair, no, no. That the you apply to the Minister of Commerce, and then when it there is a decision to grant, but there must be a consultation with the minister responsible for fisheries and the minister responsible for public markets. That's how it's supposed to work. And, and at the back end of that, obviously the ministries outside of commerce, agriculture, sorry, fisheries and, and, um, and, and uh, environment must be able to keep commerce abreast of what are the licenses issued so that we are able to maintain the, the, um, the register properly. Mayor, and just, 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 Chair, j just to be very clear, you have to recognize the two regimes that are being regulated here. There the, there's the regime where you're dealing with the parts, estimates, et cetera, that is dealt with by the NCC alone. But where you're outside of that, then that is dealt with by the, the minister responsible for commerce, but then in the approval or the granting of the license, he still must have some consultation, he must have consultation with the minister responsible for fisheries and the minister responsible for public markets. Thank you. Could we could we put in a mechanism in, in, in the legislation that says that where where um, where there's where the interests of two departments, two ministries, um, not necessary come in conflict, but huh? converge. Correct. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm. Converge that there would be an, uh, a mechanism that would allow uh, a kind of interministerial or interdepartmental committee to be able to, can you, can you do that in legislation? Chair, um, just, to, just to say that I originally it used to be consultation with the vending committee and then there was a long discussion and you see the thing is that what we have here is as a result of prolonged discussions by stakeholders. Um, admittedly, it is not perfect, but we don't want the good to the, the perfect to be the enemy of the good. In addition, I have to make the observation that the the act does not come into effect immediately, but that there is provision for it to come into operation on the day of proclamation. That then gives all the, state, the, the functionaries the opportunity to come up with a mechanism that will deal with things as, as efficiently as possible. Thank you. Um, Minister, sorry, Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, sir. No, this is, this <laughs> the money is not big, but in my view, the principal PLE is big. And I do not know why we continue to attach fees to things like this. I said this before, I understand if we ask um, very affluent lawyers to pay a professional fee for, uh, to, uh, uh, to be allowed to operate on a yearly basis or the medical people or what have you. I understand that. I do not understand why we're asking vendors still in 2021 to pay a fee. Money is small, but to me the principle is a big thing. I understand the penalties for breaches and they should be applied. But a license fee to sell pears down the road at the corner? Certainly that is, uh, uh, that's behind us. Government can't make much money from that. Well, what's, what's the fee for? Minister Cummins. Chairman, uh, thank you. I just wanted to raise a point here in um, the licensing application process. Now, uh, the legislation does speak to, uh, in great detail, the 
the information required for the licensing, what happens uh, in the issuance of that license, and what happens in the instance of breaches. But I am not seeing any requirement for an obligation on the part of the government agencies of which you spoke to turn this around in a time frame that does justice to the applicant. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, if, if we are to have persons who have submitted an, uh, an application for a license and they're there for the purpose of earning a living and their livelihood, and they're not those that are earning significant sums of money on a monthly basis, if they're paying an application fee of $150, Chair, and this takes, as is unfortunately not unusual in the system of the bureaucracy, to take over an extended period of time, I think uh, then that creates a challenge. And, and Mr. Chairman, I would want to urge perhaps that we would want to have uh, at least some level of predictability given to turn around time for this in the interest of applicants, Chair. And may God bless you for that, Minister. Um, I, I, I know that this is a matter that also attracted our attention earlier, and I'm glad that um, I'm not alone. I, I, I feel that this is perhaps and I will come back to the Leader of the Opposition, but I, I, I feel that this is perhaps a matter that we could benefit from some, from some guidance on as to how best this check and balance on the system could be implemented. Because with the best wishes in the world, unless there's some sort of, an, at a minimum, an agreement that there is an a uh, 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 standard of service arrangement between the two ministries or the three ministries. There is that almost predictable and inevitable challenge that we will come up against, whereby something will just take too long on somebody's desk at some point in the process, to the detriment of an applicant. Um, and I'd be happy to hear any suggestions as to how we could get around that. The leader of the opposition is speaking before having the uh, floor, but I'm happy to hear him. On your other point, leader of the opposition, um, the legislation, I, I, I know to be fair to you, you made the point about fees when you spoke in the, in the House when this matter was introduced. Um, I felt then, as I do now, that it is an interesting point. The register of vendors, which we will come to at Clause 7, has to be created and it has to be maintained. It will be done in electronic form and also in physical form. To the extent that it is going to be in physical form, it will require some manual work. And I think that basically we are talking about a nominal fee, but effectively one has to have manpower to do these things. Now I'm not going to say that the $100 that is being charged for an annual license or the $25 or $50, whichever it is, for an occasional license, is adequately or accurately reflecting what you're going to pay somebody to maintain the register. But equally, in my judgment, precisely because it is small, it does not do harm or injury to the applicant. But at the same time, everyone who has to pay a cent in anything takes a stake in the process. And I think that that is also an important thing as well. Um, and, and that is, but I'm pre prepared, honorable member, to hear your, your argument on this further if you wish to come back again. Um, Deputy Chief, are there any suggestions that you can make to us on the point that Minister Cummins raised, please? Chair, um, a time period could be inserted in terms of the decision to make the for the grant of a license. So um, it would just be a discussion of policy point in relation to the time period that can be set. So is it seven days? Is it 14 days? What is in the interest of business, but also balancing what are the resources of the ministries involved, all the functionaries involved in order to get that job done? Thank you. And, and I, I'm reluctant to arbitrarily try to set a time frame from this position, but I would be grateful, Minister Ford and Minister Humphrey and Minister Weir, if you all would speak with your technical chiefs. 
and get an idea as to what they feel would be a reasonable turnaround time? Minister, just to be, sorry Chair, just to be clear. There are going to be circumstances where the response is, we have no space. You know, right. that, that more often than not will be the response. If persons apply, for example, in the fish market, there are hardly any spaces. People often want to be selling fish, especially we found a, a tremendous increase in the last year because circumstances were so hard. But the response would be, we really don't have any space. Um, I do not know in those circumstances that persons should pay an application fee when we clearly don't have any space. What, what, what happens now normally is that persons only pay a fee when we are offering a space, not necessarily on the application itself. So verbally you say, well, sorry, we don't have any space. Once such is done and there is actually a facility to, inc uh, to actually have somebody, then we say, well, this is the fee, this is what you have to pay and so on going forward. So the response time for me could be very quick because more often than not I'm saying I do not have a space. If it is a case where there is a space then and we're offering the person um, a position in the market then we would then be able to set a time frame. And I think that's what we need. The time yeah. frame for the because in the negative it really is not an issue. Yeah. You can set that immediately because you know. And yeah. if, if the affirmative is, is the issue then we would need to know what from your ministry's perspective or the right. consideration. I'm agreeing with you, Chair. I'm, I'm just saying in practice, instead of taking people's money for application, mm. so that people are applying and there's no space, that seems somewhat. Now, you, you argued two things at one time, and I, I take the second point as well. Effectively, if I'm understanding you correctly, you're saying that, the, and the leader of the opposition is not listening, I want him to listen. The suggestion from Minister Humphrey is that you would not take charge a fee to someone who is not going to have uh, an affirmative um, answer to the application. I'm that that but is you know the, the opposition is going further. Yeah, he's yeah, where he's going. No I'm not, I wasn't responding or trying to rebut what he's saying. I'm sure mm. what he's saying it comes from a very decent place. But I, all I'm saying is that the current practice, no, is that that person only pays once we are in a position to give them a space. Um, so, so in, and that was more in relation to the, the Minister Cummings' questions in terms of time frame and so on. So I take your point that on the one hand where there is no space and the response is almost immediate, but does that response then come from you, Minister of Commerce, or from me, <laughs> Minister of Maritime? And that ties me into the issue that Senator Holder raised. Um, because I know I don't think we want to create systems that unnecessarily become more and more convoluted. You know, the Prime Minister here, she would speak of the, the, the Byzantine architecture that we seem to build. The way I had envisioned this thing, um, Chair, would be because beyond an application, a person is determined to get a space if they're trained to a certain extent um, so that the person has the, the skills to, to, to be there in the first place. Um, we've been, we were looking at some point at um, person's behavior, if the person's had a history of causing disturbances in the market and so on. So I'm saying there are other things that come to bear beyond issuing a license that commerce would surely not be aware of. And I had thought that the way this would work would be that the person would come to us, we would do the necessary, this is how I thought it would work, we would do the necessary work and make the recommendation to commerce so that commerce's only responsibility would be to, to assume obviously that we've done the work and then we pass it on to you, issue the license, you keep the register because that would be on that end. I do not know that you want to inherit the, the, inherit the work of actually investigating all these persons on a case-by-case -case basis. No. That work remains with the ministry and at the end of that work we say, um, okay, we are going to recommend you for the license from the Minister of Commerce so that you have your files, you have your records, but you're not, you know, getting involved in the minutiae of sure. the ministry. Um, no, I, I think you're getting, yeah, a little, little bit lost here. Because that, all of that is supposed to be captured in the consultation process. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I don't think I'm lost. So I think you're lost. What I'm saying is, what I'm saying, I'm far from lost. I, I'm just, I'm what I'm saying is, Chair, that in terms of consultation, why would the Ministry of Commerce wish to engage itself in these matters that are, could easily solely be determined by one ministry. Why then would we have to go and make this process so complex? 
Why can't the ministry with the skills, the know-how, the relationship make the assessment and make a recommendation? The consultation then becomes between the Ministry of Maritime and the Ministry of Commerce. But I don't know that you want to engage every single vendor. Deputy Chief, you're leaving us? Um, I think that I think that it is um, within the. I was looking for it in the legislation. I think that there is a provision in the legislation for there to be a a, a register maintained of all of the vendors. I think it is seven. Um, uh, yeah. So that 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 at, at clause seven. That provision for the register is, is there, and that register is maintained by the Ministry of Commerce. I believe that where Ms. Bell was going is that when once you have done all of your due diligence internally, and you've issued um, um, or agreed to the issuance of the license, then the register that reflects the fact that the license has been issued has to be maintained by, which is obviously a question of us facilitating each other with the flow of exchange of information. I'm um, sure every mayor. Chair. Um, what I'm gathering is that from the legislation is that because we are having one vending bill and you as Minister of Commerce that this is what you're getting from the, um, the legislation that persons apply to the Ministry of Commerce in the event that it is an application that would um, require the visual acuity of either myself as minister responsible for NCC, Minister Humphrey, or Minister and we are based on where the person seeks to be. Um, I think that what Ms. Bell was saying is that there's a central um, ministry within the Ministry of Commerce, and then you would pass on that application to the various ministries. That's why I'm sensing that the legislation is speaking to, rather than individual persons applying to individual uh, ministries. That's why I'm sensing well, yeah, that. Yes. Except for, yeah. except for the, the ministry that you lead, Minister, I believe that in, in the case oh. of the ministry, oh. right, you also, the you're National also, Conservation right. Commission, because of its unique um, responsibilities, um, has the complete control over, over that. But equally then, you all share with us that information with respect to, to, um, to issued licenses. Minister Cummins. Chairman, thank you. I, I, I take the points raised by the colleagues, um, Minister Humphrey and um, Minister Ford, and of course your explanation and that of Mrs. Bell. But I just want to perhaps offer a bit of a counter to some of what we're, we're thinking. So from a regulator's perspective and from an administrator's perspective, what we are doing functionally works. Uh, whether it is a consultative mechanism, whether it is the individual ministries who have the relationships leading, from an administrator's perspective, it's fine. But I want us to pause for a minute and think about it from a user's perspective. Is it overly burdensome to the user to have to go through what could be perceived to be a bureaucratic process when perhaps we have an opportunity in 2022 to craft a process that enables the user to have an efficient engagement with a one government approach where we rationalize where the information needs to come from, but the user has just to have one single interface. I think if we were designing this maybe in the early 2000s or late 1990s, we could perhaps take a different approach, but we have an opportunity close to the end of 2021 and the beginning of 2022 to modernize some of these processes in the interest of, cons of users of the system. Because, Mr. Chairman, I, I have to say that oftentimes the comfort of a salaried job clouds judgment when $150 has been shelled out for an application process and you are waiting for an extended period of time to get an answer. That seems like a lot of money, not just money spent, but money lost in the interim. And it also makes criminals of people who are really just trying to earn a living 
not because we want it to be so, but because we could have had an opportunity to make it user friendly. And I just want to just perhaps go back to the earlier recommendation that among the agencies affected, there may need to be a discussion on what that time frame would look like, but also to layer on top of that, Chairman, what the process should look like to make it user friendly and as simple as possible. And the point is taken, uh, Minister. I, I must tell you that Clark and I were exchanging similar conversation here at the at the table. Um, what probably we have to decide first of all is the time frame within which the user gets an answer if it is in the affirmative. And I, I must tell you, I, I genuinely can't, I don't know what happens in agriculture, I do not know what happens in fisheries or equally at NCC in this regard, but it would seem to me that a week should be an outer limit. I, I really can't envisage why it should take much longer than a week. And in the case of you, Minister, for you would know where your fish markets are, you would know what capacity you have, either you have or you don't have. Um, so it, it shouldn't be that hard. So a week might be even too long. But, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't want to just sit here and say that glibly. I feel that, Minister Ford, you're agreeing with me or disagreeing? Your, 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 your oh, mic sorry. is not on. I'm saying that um, I suspect those questions will be answered by the various entities that we can revert as um, soon as. Yeah. Oh, the manager markets is present. Would you be willing to assist us, sir? Before you speak, let's let me just alert the members of the committee. It is my proposal, it is now 10 past the hour. My proposal was that we would take the luncheon interval at quarter past. We may, depending on how much conversation is triggered by the manager markets, have to push that back a little bit. But that is not meant to shorten your contribution at all, sir. But um, we will go to lunch for 45 minutes and then come back and do another hour to hour and 15 minutes before um, we close for the day. Please proceed. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, it, it all depends on the type of activity. Sorry, state, state your name and your position oh, sorry, for sure. the record, Manager please. Markets, Minister of Agriculture. Um, it yeah. all depends in terms of the activity that you're looking at doing. Some activities require some background information to go through the police or whatever the case may be. Some activities you have to make a decision on the spot. I, I would have explained that um, you have perishable commodities. You are a farmer. Your commodities are perishable. You come across, you, you have a, um, bananas, fruits, or the case may be. You cannot wait for a week or two weeks for a decision. As it stands, if a person comes to a public market, he has some commodities, you, and there is space, you make the decision on the spot to allow that person to sell. Okay? If you are a, a, if you're a butcher, you're applying for, uh, you're looking to get a butcher's license, you have to go through a series of steps, um, health, the health regulations and so on. If you want to sell food, again, the food hygiene regulations are there, which would require some investigation. The person may have to go through uh, different things. And the fish markets, again, um, you may have a situation where a person who have decided that, okay, I'm going out to, to, to fish. You catch a whole set of jacks. You can't wait to a two-week period because the, the commodity is inherently perishable. Mm -hmm. So the decision, as I, I agree with the Minister of Maritime Affairs, that it, I, I understand what your intentions are as well with respect to the bill, but there are unique situations within the fish market setting, and he knows quite well that we're trying to do um, some work with the vendors and so on to improve <coughs> the SPS measures and so on, which will require um, a duration of, 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 of time and some training. The same thing happens with um, those persons who are involved in making vending as well. So again, for mm -hmm. a person who wants to sell, sell food from a canteen, a week or two weeks might be enough, mm -hmm. but a person who has highly perishable commodities 
Um, it, time is of the essence, and as Minister Cummings has rightly said, that you do not try to make a mm -hmm. how person jump through too many hurdles in order to make a honest living because some person may have a pressing situation at, at, um, at hand and will want to get involved in a business activity as quickly as possible. But sure, I'm sorry, <clears throat> this is Mr. 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 King. Um, the, surely then you're pointing us to a zone where we have to find some reasonableness. It can be, it can be fairly short in some instances, or it could extend for over a week and others. And we got to find a way of finding a, 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 a sweet spot somewhere in the middle, where it'd be a best practice that we'd be aiming at getting everybody to come to. Uh, if you had, and I'm not holding you to this now, but just to advise the committee, if you had to advise the committee on where you felt that reasonable zone across the ministries would be, where would you say? Time, the time frame, how long? A no more than a week. A week. In, in my in my view, because if 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 there is space available within a particular market, mm -hmm. and you can get all the players involved, if you have a large large committee, it has to go through a whole set of people. You know that that's going to be problematic. Right. If you have a very very small committee, or that you can run robin rather quickly, you can have a decision within a week or so. And the way but I see it, the way I see it, to be honest with you, Mr. King, is that my 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 um, director of commerce or the chief business development officer contacts you, or contacts your counterpart in fisheries, um, or alternatively, Mr. Al's. And that is really the committee. Mr. I was at, um, at NCC, Mr. 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 Um, from from my, from Mr. Lewis from from um, Fisheries, yourself, or Mr. Kalach. Uh, effectively, in some instances, that is no more than a phone call. Um, and if there was even even there was need for collaboration across the four of you. You can do that on a Zoom meeting for a couple minutes. It is not that difficult. So I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, we should be able to say at the outer limit that a decision is taken of this nature within a few days. Seven days, at a, a, in my judgment, is more than enough. But, um, but Minister, you also take into consideration that some activities require um, um, uh, a, a, a level of investigation. Agreed. Okay, Agreed. and in some instances, from from our standpoint, every argument here with the police, the right by this police force, sometimes the the applicant can be protracted because of a number of things. The police may want to see the, the physical area. They may want to make sure that there there are no obstructions. You're not blocking. Then there's also the aspect of the the fire service as well, and as you know, in the market sets, in the market system, those issues do not exist. But as as you start to go in outdoor vending spaces, on streets and the highways and so on, you you have to take a different approach in terms of how we are going to do the the, uh, the approval of the applicant. And again, the nature of the activity as you as long as you start going to prepare food, process food, and so on. The, the requirements are, again, different. You have to, you know, or go through different... Health and safety considerations. Precisely, yeah. Okay, fair Chairman. enough. Yes, Senator Wiggins. Yes, sir, thank you. I want to introduce a new ball here right now. You want to uh, do what, sorry? I want to introduce a new ball here right now. A new ball? Yes, sir. Well, a new ball is never a good thing to introduce <laughs> just before lunch. <laughs> <laughs> So given that we are talking about the regulations for the licensing requirements, mm -hmm. I was wondering, even in a little bit of segue, moving on from what the manager markets were saying, that if you're going to be doing background checks and investigations, um, and you're regulating vending, and you're regulating these activities, where would we put cradial larceny? Because you want to more or less you know, regulate the whole aspect. Because a lot of vendors, um, you know, before you can take your produce to the supermarkets and so on, 
um, you have to have a license and possibly a receipt to show the source where you have gotten um, the produce from. Mm. So I'm just wondering if this would also be a good mechanism to um, control the whole question of predial larceny, even in terms of granting licenses as well as to approve because the manager markets is saying a week and suppose if the police or other or Ministry of Commerce through here is investigating and there are issues of predial larceny, if it wouldn't take a little bit longer, sir. So that's yes, the end of my bowling spell. I, I understand. And you may have you may have changed games. You may have actually gone to baseball and, and introduced a curveball. But <laughs> but but I think that we can allow Minister Weir to, to speak. He can choose either before or after the luncheon interval. But the, the, his ministry is working on another piece of legislation which will treat to this matter, as I understand it. Um, you want to go, Minister? Yes, Chair, thanks. I, I'll be very brief. Um, Deputy Chief CPC already alluded to it earlier. Um, this is under a separate regime, really. And the legislation itself is highly modernized with technology so that um, within the space of hours, you can get information on anybody with produce. All right. Chair, may I have um, one quick, quick the, second? Yeah, Minister Humphrey. Sir. Okay, I just want to get the process right. We brought a bill here last week, two weeks ago on the file where every intention of file is to have, as we are seeking here to do, you submit from the ships, international ships, one time, and then through an electronic process, the various agencies responsible for information get it. It's almost on time, uh, basic, basically these things happen immediately to facilitate international ships and international business, and hopefully to move our marking up the doing business index. In this circumstance, we too must be seeking to facilitate business. We're seeking to facilitate the vendors and to make them have an experience now that is quicker, it is seamless, it is less painful, less bureaucratic. And I appreciate that we need to have a single repository of information, which is commerce, and I totally support it, as I've always supported it. Um, but I think we have to be very clear that the process is, as you're seeking to do, sir, expeditious and not challenging on the persons because my, my whole focus was simply that I'm thinking that because we know, we know our people and we know the circumstances, um, it would have been easier to, to work the other way. But if it's coming from you, we would then have to be, we would have commerce would have to be as markets, as fisheries, but have to be very, very clear that as soon as the application comes in, it would have been nice in a situation similar to file where that information is shared almost immediately because um, we've, we've built a whole architecture to facilitate the ship. So the application comes in to, to the Ministry of Commerce. It then has to go to an officer who then has to contact the, uh, the person, uh, bear in mind that the person knows nobody in commerce. Then they have to contact an officer in my time, who's probably going to be a senior officer, who has to go and contact the lower level officer. I, I just think, uh, ch Chair, when we think this through, and I agree entirely, it goes to one repository. I'm not challenging that at all. But we have to, be, we have to put as much effort into building that system to ensure that this does not take unnecessarily long. Because I'm telling you, as it stands, we've added about two layers, almost, of additional bureaucracy that currently do not exist. And it is oftentimes very difficult to appreciate that adding bureaucracy expedites anything. So I am just saying we have to be very clear in our step-by-step -step deconstruct and reconstruct. We know those words well. And just be sure that what we've done actually makes it easier on the vendors while we try to make it easier on the government because we're seeking to make sure we have this repository and that the government is clear about, about its business, but we have to be clear that the persons for whom we are seeking to offer a service feels the improvement in the service, service that we offer. So uh, when I, as I close, when I used to be head of the constituency councils, we created a system very similar to this. 
every, every constituency council had a, a go-to person in every ministry. So that you, in the, in the hope that you would facilitate business. But what we found was that those persons never felt that that was the work of their ministry. Um, so many times, so that in welfare you had a go-to person, in NAB you had a go-to person, but when you contact your go-to person, it's like I'm busy with other stuff. Mm -hmm. So in practical terms, because fisheries really and truly is not the work of commerce. Agreed. And I do not want it to be a situation where it is seen as a two or three tiers down. So that when we build this out, we just have to be very, very, very clear that it is given the kind of priority that it needs, or this conversation about six days and seven days might just be theoretical. Mr. Chairman? That's a very good point. Um, um, and I would want us to be able to reflect on it. Um, Senator Holder, you wanted to yes, 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 sir. I, I thought Sorry. that you um, agreed with at least one more over with the old ball. Um, Minister Humphrey, uh, board, I think, three? Yeah, there's the six, right? Okay, I'll, I'll take the other three. Um, Chair, <laughs> I, I want to support Minister Humphrey's um, intervention uh, wholeheartedly. And uh, I guess because I raised this earlier, the issue of process. Sir, can it not be a situation where the applicant applies yes to the relevant ministry, NCC, markets, fisheries, and uh, those ministries issue the license and the ministry in turn then simply communicates with commerce to have the uh, register updated and kept current um, instead of the other way around. Sir, I'm, I'm very conscious of, of, of the user here and representing some of the users you know, we want to have a, a nimble process. So couldn't that be contemplated, sir? At first blush, I would say it sounds as though it could be. Um, maybe what we should do is to let us just reflect on this over the lunch. I think Ms. Bell, no, I say that seriously because I think Ms. Bell may need to have a conversation with me as well um, on this. You, you all, many of you do not know, but this went through countless iterations. Um, and Mr. Cumberbatch, I ain't gonna trouble you to speak now, but you were in it from the very get-go. And the, the policy consideration is something that, the original policy consideration is something that I would be glad to hear from you on. So that maybe what we probably should do, in fairness to you, Senator Holder, and you, Minister Humphrey, is let us just take lunch, have the conversations among ourselves, and come back and see whether we've been able to wrestle this to the ground. All right? Um, it is now 25 past one, and I would propose, pardon? Sorry, well, clerk is advising me that it's closer to 1.30. Um, and I would propose, <laughs> I propose that we come back at 10 minutes after 2. 40 minutes. I don't know that we need to have full 45. Lunch is in the customary dining room downstairs. Okay? Okay, so at, at 10 minutes after 2, I will be, I will be, I will be ready to um, reconvene. I would hope that we have the necessary quorum at 10 minutes after 2. Thank you very much. We are adjourned. <laughs>